half weeks ago, we tipped off the Women's College Volleyball Conference slate across the Mid-American Conference with Ball State and Western Michigan. They meet again tonight here in Muncie. Ball State victorious in Kalamazoo that first time, and it started off an eight and two conference run for the Cardinals. They're a game back of East Division leading Miami, although the Red Hawks right now have the tiebreaker with three weekends left to go in conference. Hi again, everybody. Welcome courtside here in Muncie. She's the former Wisconsin Badger, Kim Kuzma. Joel Gadek, glad to have you along with us. And Kim, you've got a Ball State team that is winning because they know how to win, a very veteran experienced bunch. Right, and like you said, they've played together for quite some time. They have a setter out there that knows how to lead the team, and they have a senior in Ellie Dunn, too, who knows how to get it done. But also, they've always been good at defense and serve receive, and they continue to, to build upon that this year. Well, for Western Michigan, they're on the other side of that very young unit. Here's Seaman, out to Dunn. Big swing, and there's a 1,000. The 11th in Ball State history to 1,000 kills in the first in nearly a decade. Isaacson rears back. You could just see the moment he decided, no, no, no. Me. And I think he might have learned that from Jake Romano. That's one of his favorite plays to have when he's in there. Schreiner keeps it alive. Dunn as well. Got it over. Great save by Schreiner and Dunn. That was awesome. That was geometrically challenging. She's got a chance at Sarah Obras if she gets set every time and Ball State makes it to the national finals. <laughs> Honestly, that, that's a pretty tall order, I'm not sure. If, <laughs> but regardless, being on that list with all of those great Ball State players is a feat for sure. Free ball from Sid Van Beek. Yarber starts setting and goes behind her, and another, oh, it was a near kill. Kate Carey has the match high with five in the first set. Overpassed, and that's off Siemens' left wrist. Bontrager took a swing there. It was a tough swing. She did cross body towards the line. Overpass took care of it. Like you should take care of overpasses in this conference. Western Michigan struggled in the first set. 12 errors. So if you take away the self-inflicted wounds, and I have to imagine that's the conversation that happened in Colleen Munson's huddle, you give yourself a better chance here. Well, and if you look at the stats, both teams had 11 kills, but Western had 12 errors, and Ball State had, I think, three? Three errors. So that's the difference between Ball State hitting 222 and Western hitting 022, negative 022. And in a nine-point match. Right. Yarber outside. Here's Bontrager. And one of the most frequent swingers in the conference comes up with the kill. Already playing better this set in the first few points than she played throughout the first set. So it's good. It's always good to see a player be able to come back that quickly, especially as a sophomore, someone that hasn't been around too long. A lot of times when freshmen or sophomores don't have a great first set, they're done for the rest of the match. And obviously, that's not the case here. Slide play, Starling, it's a solo stuff there. Bone Traeger now will try her hand on offense and goes right through Meg Starling. So not only has she not shut it down, but she has come to play here in set number two. Bon, bon Traeger show there, she got a great block touch on the swing first, hit it up, she was able to get off, transition, and then get a good tough swing. Avila had to really sprawl and over passes, and the rare receiving error for Kate Avila. Teams are, are switching right now. Ball State did a really good job at serving pass the first set. Now Western is doing a good job at serving pass. There's a good ball from Schreiner, and it gets Meg Starling on the slide play. She's so good off one foot. Bontrager's mad at herself right there. Her right shoulder came off of the net, which is why she, did, she got used on that block instead of getting a solo block, if you saw it on there. Instead of pushing that right hand over, her shoulder came off. There's an ace for Ball State, and it draws the Cardinals back within one. Blocking is all about angles. It's something that, like, to the naked eye, you can't necessarily see, but the trained eye, you look in the millimeter, the inch, the difference, the rotation, matters a ton. 100%. A lot of it has to do with your core, too. Being able to be strong in the air and staying in the air the same way that you would once you're on the ground up at the top of the air. So 
one little thing, your hand is, is out instead of in, or your shoulder comes off, and it's a kill for the other team. That's why I always struggled with blocking the core strength. Right, yeah. right. Same. More hollow rocks. <laughs> That was a great high school blocker. <laughs> another slide play turns into another kill for Meg Starling. It's almost as if Ball State would, if it could, set the slide play every time up. It's not a, not, not a bad idea. They run it pretty quickly, and they're one-on-one -on -one every single time, so it has a, definitely a better chance of getting a kill, and right now she is. She's hitting 500, so she's getting a kill almost every time. Western continues to work Ball State's block, though. Meredith Phillips goes right through Starling. And the Broncos will try to do to Ball State what Toledo did to the Broncos last night. Western Michigan had two dominating set victories, but lost in five. Right back to Lindsay. Little two-man game. Set the setter, she'll set you. And I like that she set her again. So she set her the first time, it wasn't a kill. She transitioned, got back. That was a very fast set to the outside. And Lindsay was able to get there and get another kill. Ball State looking for the equalizer. And it's Van Beek back in off the bench and back into the scoring column. I love she doesn't really, as a middle, since you're blocking, you have to get off in transition. You're not going to have the approach that the outside or the right side have. And she does a great job of just hopping off the net, jumping up and swinging, and still getting a ton of power on the ball. Cardinals hitting percentage has actually risen from the first set here in the second, despite it being close. Crawl, and the rookies dug up. Quick for Western Michigan. Attack from Seaman. Amber Seaman loves to attack as a setter, and she picks her spots well, and that's gotten better as she has gotten older. And she does it at a good time, too. Setters, smart setters, know that when the ball's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, defenders aren't always being as disciplined as the play goes on. So when they may have been in their base position where she's gonna set that ball over the beginning of the play, they're more tired at the end of the play. They don't wanna move as much, so they're not gonna be in the same position as they were at the beginning. She knows that, she's smart about that, and that's when she decides to throw the ball over on two. Spoken from experience? Yeah, I was always in possession, but... My, my freshman year, we had a senior setter that used to burn me every single time. And then she came back after she was done playing and she stopped burning me. She's like, oh, you finally figured out how to defend my set over? Seaman will actually go to a hitter here and Van Beek gets stuffed. Cassandra Schmiegel. Sophomore was up with the bowl. Yep, as you mentioned, good help block on that. So Van Beek had two blockers right in front of her. She didn't really have much choice but to go up and try to use the block, and they were right there, hands over, discipline. What's the plan? Hit it as hard as you can, hope you tool it? I mean, if you know that two blockers are right in front of you, if you can, you tip it over them, but sometimes it's so fast and you're already swinging, and there's, there's not really much you can do at that point. Just hope, hope your players have your back and cover it, if possible. Double touch on Western. Catherine Stark serving. Long way to go for Yarber. Bump set out to Lindsay. Makes the good adjustment. Yarber in the middle. Overpassed and Ball State in the net. The ball loves hitting the ball back towards the center side of the net. So Ball State just needs to do a better job keeping that ball on their end. They can definitely do it. Um, but point for Western with that ball. Broncos got out to a hot start. Ball State has eked its way back in here in the second. Slide play Van Beek. Stark on the coverage. Here's Lindsay. Bontrager, that was low. Slide again and said Van Beek's dug up. Yarber at the net. 
Big swing, LeBoule. Tied again at nine. Love that play. Defensively, perfect dig right to the center. She could run whatever option she wanted. Jarber gets up there, knows that Van Beek is still getting back to her spot, so set the middle. It's gonna be a score every time. Jay Hasek said he reminds him of Riley Salmon. Team USA guy. Does yeah. that jive with you? Yeah, uh, Riley was a part-time libero, part-time outside hitter, very crafty, same way. It's, think of Greg Maddox in baseball. Not the biggest arm in the world, but very crafty and still very effective. Here's Egarevba. Youth on the other side for Ball State. Freshman out of Chicago land. Off the block of Egarevba. Green slam again off of Egarevba. George Mason continues to try to run that middle. This is a little unique form this set, but they've stuck with it. Not just in the beginning, but they've now set Reese a few times here in this set. It's seven kills. The pins have been the go-tos. Wagner and Greenslade. Oh. Hey, 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 just popped that up. Big swing, Hayden Wagner. And that's what's set in that middle over and over against the freshman middle on the Ball State team. He starts to stay in with it, jumps with it, and leaves Wagner wide open behind. So that's where it pays off, going to the middle over and over. He loves photography. It's like a picture of that takeoff, too. The way he can just rear back with that kind of a running start. That's a lot of fun to do when you get that big of a runway with no block. <laughs> yeah. Janisi tools the block. Ball State does have the lead now here in the fourth set. Trying to force a fifth. Ball State's gotten to its fair share of fifth sets this year beat Harvard, beat Cal Northridge, lost to UC Santa Barbara, beat NJIT. Mason has not been to a fifth set. Jenis, that trickles through. Starting to feel that momentum turn down back to the Cardinals. They kind of weathered the storm real early, haven't made a whole lot of unforced errors here down the middle part of this set. Paying off here. Just caught the forearms of Greenslade. Off balance. Isaacson on the move. Little miscue with Shevs. Dump down. Good save by Isaacson. Shevs retreat and hit it long. Tried to make the best of another tough set. Yeah, I wasn't sure who he was setting on the George Mason side. That was kind of in between the middle and the left side, but thankfully, Reese has that 12 2 touch. He can get up and get it regardless of who it's to. They got a couple guys that can jump 12 feet up front. We haven't seen Langston Payne tonight. He's not on the trip. Dealing with an ailing injury. But man, that's a benefit. And Shevs would have liked to get up that high on that one. He misses long, just got under the ball. <laughs> 